Hello, and welcome to the Halo Forge epidemic. Invasion. This is Abel Sir Thomas, and I'm here with Yarbird92. Hey, guys. And this is our newest invasion map feature, and this is Bravo Sight by Mr. Sato. Now, Bravo Sight is a elite defense map set in the canyon of Forge World, and offers a lot of interesting geometry, especially in the first phase. And I'm going to go ahead and let Yarbird talk about it a little bit. So, uh, one thing you should know about Mr. Sato is he likes to play Big Team Battle a lot. He's a very good Big Team Battle forager. He's made some very interesting maps that um, you may see uh, from Psycho Duck later on. I'm not sure, but it's always good. Um, but you can definitely tell in, uh, in this invasion map that he definitely incorporated some of those Big Team Battle elements into this invasion map. Usually in an invasion, especially Tier 1, you'll see a lot of close range battles with the, the Assault Rifle and the Plasma Repeater really running as the primary weapon. But on uh, tier 1 here, you can definitely see that this is more of a magnum needle rifle map, and even needlers every now and then. Uh, it definitely plays along sight lines more so than other maps, though. And he, he did it in a very, very good way that definitely helps the gameplay and makes it very unique and interesting. So the main aesthetic feature of tier 1 is obviously this massive forerunner generator. Right? It's either a shield generator or some sort of power source. Either case, uh, the, the Spartans' objective is to shut it down via one of the uh, one of the consoles on either side of the generator. And you'll see that uh, there's definitely an emphasis on the on the outside flanks of this map. The Spartans, Alpha, and Bravo teams will definitely run along the rocks along the outside, uh, with middle teams sometimes coming up the up the middle, but they usually tend to be a little less effective than uh, making a full-sided push. Especially with these long sight lines, like, we, like we've already seen. But it definitely helps in the long run. I mean, it helps divide the map and define fire team roles. So as we, as we move on here to phase two and three, uh, we get a good view of the new focal point, which is this really epic kind of forerunner fortress. And we have uh, one of the objectives here on the inside and another just on the outside around the uh, front entrance. Now the interior objective play is pretty interesting because you tend to have one player move into the objective and then two or more players move up the stairwell to cover the players in the objective. Didn't really work out, but did it? Oh no. There was far too many elites there and there were like really cross teams. We met plasma grenades. So here as we look at the interior of the structure, we have the middle team spawn just on the left right there. And just behind that is the left team spawn, as well as the cave entrance, which the Spartans can use to flank defenders, especially on tier three. And uh, as you guys notice, he, he did a really good job here on the interior of the structure. And just overall on the map is very, very clean, very, you know, budget, budget conscious. He, he has a very low object count and definitely a lot of unique geometry on this map. And here we're getting a look at the uh, outside objective and for, I have to say, a pretty derpy push over here. Yeah, he, he's got rockets, oh. so you think he'll definitely do well with it. And then he armor locks with nobody around. And then, yeah. of course, then you, you've got the derpy around. defense to, uh, to sum it all up there. Double kill. <laughs> as soon as someone comes around, his armor lock is depleted and he goes, oh, it's just bad. I can't believe so Ghost missed that one interior. up, honestly. Uh, I, I gotta, you know, I'm more disappointed in the Ghost than the, than the armor locker. Yeah, the interior obje objective tends to be more difficult to take, but when you take it, you're going to have a foothold inside the base, you're able to make a good core rush. Which, uh, you know, can be effective at times. This time it wasn't really because they were all inside of it. But uh, it's definitely a good strategy to push that inside one. Pro defense. So we have a elite teabagging on pool. We see this a lot now. It's just, uh, for some reason, people think it's a good idea to do back the core. Defend the core from the core, yeah. Okay, Perfect. you guys can have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> so as we, uh, we look more at the uh, exterior here, we have a view of the vehicle bay and the wraith and the two ghosts spawn in there. And the tank spawns in tier three for Spartans. So the by tier three they'll have a tank, a rocket hog, and a warthog. So there's there's a lot of cool vehicle combat on this map, thanks to the use of a lot of natural geometry and just kind of the way Sato complements the hills as opposed to building over them or building around them. He was really able to utilize them 
in, in very interesting ways for the three nice animals. <laughs> and also, don't rush the rocket puck inside the, the portal lane. I love this camo elite for the win here, though. Even though he died, that was that was a pretty good stealth there. With you know, <laughs> except for the the giant red waypoint over his head. <laughs> um, just to mention, guys, if someone's in camo, don't spawn on him. That's just really especially when he's right in front of a scorpion. Yeah. I mean, you're not gonna Go get the game. It. You're just gonna get him killed, and then he's gonna be pissed at you. And just it's not worth it. Yet. So, so one of the cool things about this structure, though, since you have the main exit in the front, and you know the the whole structure being built on a hill, when you pull the core out, it tends to roll down the hill, you know, to the left or the right. So uh, you know a lot of the strategy kind of involves just pulling that core out and just throwing it out of the front entrance, and hoping it rolls towards your direction, or kind of dropping it in a position to where you know it's going to roll in an area of your favor. It didn't quite work on this round, but there's there's a lot of cool strategies I've seen. You know, and just being able to get that core to move quicker. It's another one of those cases where it probably would have helped the uh, the offense if they had moved the core a little bit closer to their spawns before making the trek to the core cap. Because now they got, they got all the vehicles to contend with, and it's just not in a desirable location to, to be fighting for. See, if it was a little bit further, the spawns would, able to, would have been able to clear out those elites much easier and uh, would have been able to you know, push the core with four or five people. But since they had it in position cool. the case, they were able to set up on one minute remaining. Take down the lot of the spawns resources. Oh man, we just <laughs> we just cannot get that core. Stolen. <laughs> it's it's moving slowly. Yeah, this map is is a little bit more difficult than most of the uh, maps one. in terms of capturing the core, but it's definitely very satisfying and it's very doable. It's just, I guess, a, a lot of the games we've played, we haven't had very coordinated teams that are utilized a lot of the weapons and 30 seconds uh, positions remaining. that were, have been given to uh, attackers. This has got to be right here some of the, the worst time in terms of just bad luck that I see. I mean, you know, uh, Psychosis, he fires a rocket right when he drops the bubble shield, then you guys get hit with fuel rods, and the rocket hog just goes splattering Ten through everything. There's no only secondary explosions. Yeah, it didn't work out too well. Craziness. So as we're winding up the footage here, I just like to thank you guys for watching, and feel free to subscribe and comment, and uh, you guys have a good one. We'll be bringing more Invasion features soon. I'm signing off. Signing off.